not knowing exactly what you have done, but I am fully confident that uh, looking at what you have done last last two years, uh, you have done quite substantial work uh, that will not only move uh, the Kulia, but also the university uh, in, in general. Uh, I think uh, this particular Kulia to me is important <coughs> because you almost symbolizes what IIUM is all about. Yeah? Uh, not only from the philosophical point of view, the conceptual point of view, even the making of the kulia itself is quite extraordinary. 
in all the other visits that I've made, I uh, went. Uh, I said, this is a kulia that actually shaped what the university is all about, not only being the first, among the first, if not the first, uh, and also uh, having uh, the biggest number in terms of students, student mix, and the concepts are also quite uh, iconic in many ways. So you, you, you almost resemble what the university is all about. So when we talk about IRKHS, to me it's not a kulia centric thing, it is almost a university thing. Although it could be coming from engineering, but IRKHS must exist there. Uh, in fact, as individual, I think we also must support it. So it is a concept that overwhelms the whole university, but yet you are the quote-unquote uh, symbol of how successful we are. Right, so to me, uh, this kulia is in that sense uh, very important because uh, the first thing that people will wish is well, how successful are we in trying to bridge this reveal human science together. But what I have done, and I'm very fortunate in that sense, I'm just a kind of a person who picks up things that I've seen around and repacked it and presented it to you again. Yeah? So there is no attempt to shift the goal. Some people say, well, now the IIM has shifted the goal from triple ICE to SDG. Uh, I told them, no, it is still triple ICE, but in the disguise of SDG, and I will explain it to you. So let it be clear that you are still where you are, but we are now picking things to make things happen almost quite uh, uniquely within its context. Yeah? So apa yang, yang, yang Prof. Shukran katakan tadi, when we bring in the Makasida Sharia within Fasafa Pendidikan Kebangsaan, talk about SDG and talk about the four goals of uh, UNESCO is all within the same ambit. Perhaps uh, worded quite differently in this particular context. Yeah? So what I want to talk to you today is how do we map this out? For the year 2021 and 2022, how do you map this out? Meaning, how do you put it on the ground, how do you translate it, and how do you make it happen the way we did uh, in the last two years, except that this time we are moving on higher gear. Okay, the last time was gear three and gear four. Now we expire to go gear five, gear six, and perhaps gear seven. If we can fly, we will fly, inshallah. So we need to go a little bit uh, faster because as I mentioned today during, during the appreciation lunch, we are trying to target, at least I'm trying to target uh, the 40th anniversary of IIB. And that will be in 2023, which is about three years from now. If we can present the university to the world at, at this age of 40, this is how we look like and how we actually make it happen. I think we have achieved a considerable goal or milestone moving forward. Yeah? So let me let me go through this. Uh, some of you have seen this before, but uh, for those of you, uh, this is what we are trying to do. Now, when I, uh, when I visited you uh, last two years, uh, we were trying to actually read in my mind, uh, how do we present the diversity to the world? All right? So now we create a stage, create a space, so that we can be more visible. The focus should be, should be more on us rather than anything around us. How do you make this happen? How do you create that particular state? And that stage to me is a global state. It's not just an international state. International, fine, but global has a different concept altogether when you talk about Rahmatan Lil Alamin. To me, Rahmatan Lil Alamin is global, not just international. International, it could be between two parties, a bilateral uh, MOU, and you sign it. That perhaps is an international. A uh, hundred uh, nations here is international. But global means it takes different spheres altogether. Yeah, and we will try and explain that and explain that letter, uh, what do we mean by global and how we differentiate that with international. We are global but we also want to be human centric at the same time. Yeah? Often when you talk about globalization, it's about trade, about uh, goods passing through borders, but human beings are still stuck within their own borders. So how do you make this human centric that everybody gets involved into the process of trying to make this university a global university as such? And then we rely on this idea of why we want to take sustainable development because in this idea of being global, we also want to make sure that we are equitable at the same time. Okay? Equitability to me with globalization must go together. Otherwise, it does not make sense. 
America is still America, Asia is still Asia, but how do you equalize this opportunity, this working together is important. And I thought the easy way to, 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 to express this is to express on the three things what sustainable development is all about. We share the same planet, right? If you want to be globalized, you share the same planet. There's all of us are inhibited on the same planet, yeah? And therefore, the prosperity of the planet must be equitable. And that's a simple, the simplest concept that I can have. A layman's, or a layman, a layman's expression of this, uh, enough for everyone forever. Yeah? And I think we know there is enough, but the distribution system is not right. And this is where I thought that Islam becomes important, because Islam will uh, guarantee equitability, justice, fairness. And that's a concept we want to bring in into this whole idea of sustainable development, not just the concept it was given to us by United Nations or somebody else, but how do you make it happen in this, in this particular way, right? But as we talked about this, we are visited by another friend which is not really very friendly, uh, and we are not expecting him or her to come. So this is a coronavirus. Yeah? Suddenly it settles on us while we are trying to make this happen, but alhamdulillah, it becomes another motivation point for me. Yeah? Because the coronavirus tells us that the world is not equitable. So you can begin to see this. United States of America, the richest, the most powerful country in the world, are facing tremendous uh, kind of uh, challenges. As compared to a small country like Taiwan, uh, there's no death in Taiwan. Yeah? And yet in America, there are what, almost uh, 150,000 deaths and it's still happening today. So we begin to see it. Uh, science does not matter, wealth does not matter. What matters is perhaps the human discipline. How we control it, how you make it happen within your own area. So that's a picture that we want to take it on. And certainly I think we can mirror this from what sustainable development is all about. When you talk about equitable world, when you talk about you know, bearable, viable world, this is a kind of world that we need to remake. I use the word remake or reshape as it were, using what? Using the paradigm of Islam. Well, if the chaya baba umani is equitable on your alleys, you know, how do you make this happen? Maybe you want to start with the kula. Is your kula equitable? Maybe you want to ask those fundamental questions, you know. If it doesn't happen in the kula, let's forget about the umani, it will not happen in the umani. So the experimentation, as far as the kula is concerned, to me is very important. How do you pilot this? How do you make this work? And that's why I really appreciate your masjid when you work uh, and some of this thing on mental health and stuff like that. That is the beginning of how to make things equitable, fair and just in the context of uh, the kula and hopefully within, within the university at the same time. We know about this. We know about the roadmap. I will not be able on to this. And we know how much we have given as far as making the roadmap work. And just to testify how it works, is basically these are the recognition we got. Now, I'm not hung up on re re uh, recognition as such, but at least there is a recognition from people outside, mainly the non-Muslim world. So when I talked about the United Nations University, uh, Zainal had been there for postdoc, uh, there are very little Muslim influence in you, you and you, except for a few you know, people uh, at that particular time uh, working as postdoc or directors, but otherwise there's very little uh, influence of Islam, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, but yet, these are the people who recognize good work. I want to emphasize this. If you recognize, if you do good work, people will recognize. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, uh, make it everything Islamic. Yeah, I, I get sometimes worried that everything must be Islamic in front of it. But yet, when we look at it, it is not Islamic. And when you go to you and you, Japanese, uh, certainly is very Islamic, all right? And that's why we invited the, 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 the former uh, ambassador of uh, Japan to be our board members. And all Muslim countries disagree. They go, why do you need a non-Muslim in this board? Well, the Masaku, uh, why he must be, was the chair, they go, because he is Islamic. You know? He came to the meeting punctually, he did his work, he offered a lot of assistance. As compared to some of them have been there for the last 25 years, have not done anything. Uh, to make this university at one. So I think this is a value that we want, we want to break in. And I am a little bit comfortable in this when, when, they, when they give this because I know where they are coming from. Yeah? When, we, when we started this, we, we, we were asking the question, 
how can this conventional university become equitable? And suddenly we find the answer is not easy. Because the structure of the university came out from the Industrial Revolution. We'll talk about a little, a little, a little bit about that. Eh? And the Industrial Revolution is the one that inequalized so many things. Where trade disparities, Marxism comes into play, uh, capitalism comes into play. I think you know this better because you are all political side. And these are the issues that I think that we need to grapple with. It is not just about IIM, it's about the whole makeup, the whole historical dimension, the whole perspective that we need to introspect and find out whether we are on the right track of the program. If not, that's why I use the word reshaping the university. How can we reshape university when the background is are all you know, very dubious as far as as far as we can see? Yeah? So now we are given the status of the RCE, and what this RCE does, the RCE basically is trying to remodel what university is all about. Alright? That now that looks very complicated. But what it says very simply is that if you look at a conventional university like we have been, we always work across universities. Yeah, so uh, I was uh, probably uh, things what international internationalization is all about. Yeah, we work with mainly probably uh, Middle Eastern University, Arabic University, uh, far and few in between the non-Muslim front. But we want to grapple a little bit. We also work vertically with uh, you know United Nations, UNESCO, even right to the school level. That is where your your company, uh, your group, your working club, the activities there yeah, are coming to work. Yeah. But that is not sufficient as far as RC is concerned. We also want to work di di diagonally. Diagonally means what? We want to work with NGOs, we want to work with communities, we want to work with mosques, we want to work with any body that has got uh, has something to do with knowledge. It could be a botanical garden, it could be a museum, it could be a zoo, it doesn't really matter, because these are sources of knowledge that we need to take into account as we talk about Rahmatan Lil I mean, you cannot talk about Rahmatan, Rahmatan Lil I mean, and forget the animals around you. Yeah? You cannot talk about Rahmatan Lil I mean, and forget about the trees around you. But these are part and parcel. So we need to get into that idea of the knowledge is not confined only to libraries, to buildings, but it's everywhere and how do we actually assemble this and use it. Yeah? So in other words, the role of RCE is almost 360 degrees. You connect and you interconnect and you get everything in a global sense where we are heading and how we can move. There is a difference. But when your RC and you see a difference here, they reach the outlook and also the work is much more comprehensive as compared to just another another university. Uh, particularly when you talk about you know, private university and so on and so forth, where money becomes an, the object of the university rather than knowledge rather than knowledge itself. So if you look at this, suddenly you find a Middle Eastern part and there's no RC at all. I cannot recall any universities around that region. Are so it makes us more unique in the sense that we are probably the first international uh, Islamic university that gets into the RC. And therefore, if I go back and look at Mr. Ali University of Karayin, yeah, 895, the first university, the first functioning university as far as UNESCO is concerned. Of course, there are other universities like Nalanda, but those are only non-functional. The first functional university is Karayin. Now, how do we connect this when you look at history of the University of Karayin? I might is here. He's a graduate for that. You know? What can we learn from this university that makes it so special that after 1,200 years, they're still functioning as a walk up university? Whereas our university, Tiko Plumiman Town, they're going well, they're going well, they're going You know, begging for here and there. Uh, but why can't we learn from Korea? Why do we talk about Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard all the time? They are not even within our tradition. I think that's the kind of mindset I want you to go back and look at it. Akara Yipur, I think, is, is built by a lady. Yeah, uh, Fatima Hafid, and, and I, when I read, when I read the history, you have a puasa, selagi, masa tu, Moslem, selagi masjid tu tak siap. You have a puasa every day until the mosque is complete, then she stopped first. I mean, that's how you build the sanctity of a knowledge not just by building the way we built it and think this is a knowledge because it looks grand. I mean, we need to move away from those ideas that forms is not as big as what substance is all about. So these are issues that I think when we talk about RCE, we are not going to be confined with the idea that is brought by the United Nations, but go back to our history and take it on board 
and how much more we can learn from this. So that I think would be one nice project from Kuya. Understand the history of uh, you know Karain, Israel, in fact, Karain even before before Arasa, right? And that model later on become Oxford, Cambridge, and then whatever it is. So how do you how do you use this uh, to uh, to understand better what knowledge is all about, right? The other one, of course, is this one. I think uh, for people uh, in the Sejantra Center, they have worked very hard on this. We are just testing the water. I mean, my my question to them: If you think are good enough. Why don't we test it internationally whether we can make some, you know, some noise somewhere? Yeah. So I think they work very hard. Um, and Diana has been working from, with me for the last 15 years, so she knows she knows what to press and what not to press. I think he pressed the right thing, and suddenly, suddenly we got into this. I mean, it's almost like a, the wildest dream. Yeah. Uh, we are the winner of the Sustainable Institution uh, of the Year. Uh, it is awarded by the United Nations Environment. People say, so what? Yeah? But so what means saya akan punya beza itu je. Orang tak talk about the RCE, uh, SDG, ranking, ranking ni, my former university or all of that. But those rankings you have to pay money for. Here is free of charge. All you need to work a little bit more and present what you need to do. Dalam itu punya ranking, ranking tu, all they put on numbers, numbers, numbers. Zainal, I don't do, I don't think put any numbers. Yeah, I don't know how he does it, but somehow or other it landed on us. But to me, when everything landed on us, I think there's a purpose. Uh, Tuhan takkan bagi ni pada kita and say, okay, you got this and then now you can enjoy. I don't think so. You say, you have got this, now you have got other leadership role to play. And what is that leadership role to play? It's better to demonstrate that this university is worthy of that award globally. And your spirit partner, I was just mentioning, Kalau 2019 yang menangi is Megil University of Canada. Yeah? For those who are North America, Megil is one of the top university uh, in, uh, in the country. I think it's mainly funded by the Yahudis. Um, but well, we are an Islamic university. So we now need to spar with them. We now need to show that we are equally good, if not better. Maybe not in terms of infrastructure, maybe in terms of the knowledge contribution and so on. So this is where we are coming from. Yeah. And the three and the three organizations I just want to introduce to you. One is uh, the Commonwealth uh, Commonwealth University Association of Commonwealth University. These are all the colonial universities uh, of the British. And then we got an international association of university. This is about uh, university that was created uh, an association that was created by UNESCO to spearhead what internet uh, tertiary education is all about 70 years ago for 700 members. And you've got the fact of four universities. So you can see these are not friendly Muslim association. Right? They are not. But they recognize good work. And Alhamdulillah, I think we're going to stay, we're going to stay for that. So if I talk to you about creating a stage, then I think we have already beginning to create a stage. Okay? And this is an understatement that I just picked up uh, last night as I browsed through. They got the, it is no longer enough to react to crisis when they arise, we must get ahead of the plan with uh, smarter investment. My eyes is not functioning. in sustainable. It's not working today. Anyway, I want to stress the way we move. We must move ahead. In other words, we must create something before it happens and proactively create something. And what is it? Investment in terms of sustainable. Why I think OECD? OECD has got a program called Wellbeing 2030. They are moving forward in 2030. They are talking about well-being. They are not talking about KPIs. They are not talking about numbers. They are not talking about the tangibles that we normally talk before this. They are beginning to focus on the human-centric values. You know? And this is where we talk about Sejahtera. We want to talk about the same line. And Alhamdulillah, Professor Kamal has also given an Islamic dimension to it. Something that I think we can use and, and, and move forward, inshallah. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem for you. For <laughs> <laughs> what you've done. And that's what I've done. Anyway, <laughs> that's the stage that you have created for yourself. All right? Look at the spotlights yeah, and see that. And suddenly you imagine uh, Professor Shukran staying there. <laughs> <laughs> what will he say to the world now? In the year 2020, you are invited 
In fact, we have already been invited to go to Berlin next year. What do we say to the world? That is different from other people who have a message. Do we say about the same thing or do we say something exceptionally different? I think that is the question that I think you might start to believe on. Okay? How do the university become distinctively different? Not for the sake of different because the, the philosophy, the worldview is different. And they have not heard of this. Okay? I'll give you one example. When I talk about Makassib, in my own terms, I don't know very much about that. And I just call it the five elements of human existence. Okay? And I talk to my European colleagues. And this is what Islam is all about. And the statement is that this concept is mind-blowing. Yeah? So we want to bring all this above board so that other people can share in the spirit of Rahman And that stage is there now. So the, my question for you now is if you are invited to this stage, what message would you give? Okay? How do you present it? If you talk about a concert, where is your actor, where is your actress? Who are the musicians? What script would you write? Yeah. How long is your show? All right. For those of you who've been to Guntur, how many of you have been to Guntur? Yeah. 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 But you have not seen the Pangong Gambira. You saw. Uh, yeah. See, the Pangong Gambira, I think, is something that we are very proud of. Because this Pangong Gambira is a, a four hour show. Yeah, orchestrated by a student of 12 years around them. They orchestrate the whole thing, they organize everything, you know, and the, the participant of that Pangong Gebiru within the four hours is 1,600 students singing, dancing, role playing, uh, doing drama, and so on. Like and it's witnessed by 4,000 people around the Kampung. Can I even do that? We are a rural stage. We are international. Buddha did you know me? Buddha did you know me? Do you see what we have to In other words, I think there is something that we can present that will all the world. But why are we not doing it? Why are we known as terrorism? Why are we known as so other things, so many things apart from the good things that we want to do? I think there's a challenge. Moving ahead, 21, 22, and 23, and then hopefully on the 40th anniversary, that will happen. So this must be behind your mind. When you do something, you say, can this be presented now on this stage? If this cannot be presented, work on its own until it can be presented, and we can be proud. We can be proud of that. Yeah. So the spotlight is on that. The spotlight is on you, and the spotlight is on everybody else within the university. Now, one of the spotlights that we should not miss, and I think this message has not been taken across the world. I may be wrong, yeah? but this combination of reveal knowledge and and, company and human sciences, right? Uh, all universities work like this. Everybody is trying to put as much as possible in your brain, but nobody talks about this. And we are the only university that talks about this. I read about the book. Uh, on on on, Apani, on how these two things together, Prof. Kamal was saying, this comes from Peter Punyo, old indigenous uh, philosopher, Dr. Zaba. Right? Zaba, like I said, 1917 is the one that mooted the idea, why can't we combine this together? Right? How many of us have written about Zaba? And his philosophical ideas. Why can't we raise Zaba to the profile of Ibn Sina or Ibn Rush? Why can't we do that? I mean, there's enough material of this guy. But if we read Buku Zaba, I don't just the one genius. There is no opus magnum on Zaba. I think it's a challenge for him. Suddenly, we can say that within our indigenous population, there is a thinker of global dimension. And his name is Zaba. And he muted us. 1970 and nobody picked it up. I, if I'm if I'm mistaken, 1950, um, Boaziz and Boaziz, Omar picked it up with a paper, something to do with the university, you know, and it was then laid out for a while until the Makkah, uh, the Makkah conference come on board. Now everybody talks about, as far as I can remember, uh, IIM is the output of the Makkah conference, which I think it is not. Coincidentally, it's almost like me passing through this place, uh, working on it. It's nothing to do with it. It's something the work that was done before. Now, I think we need to bring back this history. 
put it in this perspective, on the 40th of university, we so can be somebody right, Nanti on Zappa. Yeah, and in a very productive way, in a very intellectual way, to put one philosopher or one thinker uh, in the Malay world, in the Muslim world as such, that talks about knowledge and universities. I think those are the demands that we need to look at. You know, uh, for 35 years we might have forgotten, but it is important to bring it back. More importantly, how to get this team to work together. I think you know you know this better, but from my point of view, why you want to work it together? Because it makes it a better person. Suddenly our sense of purpose, why we are here, becomes elevated into something which is much more than what we can think of. The gaji, the, the, the pankat, the kerindukan. Yes, those are important, but it's not as important when finally you talk, you want to go to, you want to go and please Allah SWT, so at the end of the day you can go to heaven. Yeah. And again, any Guntur punya philosophy. Guntur kata, all the other university di, 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 di Indonesia, uh, masuk uh, sekolah, uh, kerja, lepas, lepas itu uh, apa dia, makan gaji, kita mati. Guntur <laughs> has got another one, masuk syurga. Most of us has forgot the last one. Kita pun begitu juga, makan dapat kerja, kena -kena, mati, kena -kena. Yeah, But we need to, when we talk about this, kita nak masuk syurga. And that, I think, is the higher purpose. When you have that on your list, everything else becomes secondary. You know? You don't want to involve in Mumbai, you don't want to involve in all those things that waste your time, you know, and you can then concentrate more on your work. And that makes you a better person. I think that is what the university is all about. So, bila the university ni, bila kita cakap tentang hal-hal yang remeh-remeh ni, I think we're just wasting our time. It doesn't bring you to the sugar, probably bring you to the other side, if I don't want to pronounce it. Yeah? Uh, and then somebody was saying, we're, we're building these bridges to heaven, fine. But he also mentioned sometimes you go to the bridge but the door is not open. Uh, the bridge sampai <coughs> pintu syurga, pintu syurga tak buka. And then, then, those are the purpose that I think we need to work on. How do you not only work the bridge, but you can also do, open the door and probably the best door. I think those are issues that I think we need to tell our students and ourselves and remind ourselves. The purpose of university is quite different from other universities uh, or, or, or other institutions and such. And then we talk about leading the way. This is the way that we want to lead, and I think our songs have mentioned it here. Khalifa, Amana, Ikra, Rahmatan, Lelamin, and some of our brothers and sisters have even summarized into a nice uh, acronym quite. Again, it has a very nice value. Okay. So, semua ni saya rasa are reminders for us of what this university is about, what is the Kuliah is all about, and why do we do this. Right? And then we go back to, 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 to enlightening the heart. Yeah. That is the engine, that is the motivation, that is the inspiration. We don't have to get inspiration from anybody else, we need the inspiration within ourselves. Kita sendiri menggelapkan inspirasi kita. You know, the deal doesn't come, doesn't matter. The rector tak datang, tak apa. Menti sakit, doesn't matter, but we still need to work. Yeah. Jadi bila rektor cuti, semua orang cuti. Bila dia kan tak ada, semua orang cuti. Bila kata tak ada KPI, never mind, tak payah kerja. You know, I think we need to run away from this, I think we need to start thinking of ourselves and how we motivate ourselves in the, in the, in the context of this. Yeah. Um, please just to remind me and sometimes you know, that you find that the heart beats much earlier before even the brain cells uh, start to develop. Yeah. But yet when you go to university, this is what we do. Kita membesarkan kepala kita. Kepala otak kita kadang-kadang. But kita mengecilkan jiwa. So we get students who are qualified but has very timid a sort of uh, a self-confidence. Yeah? Tak berani bersuara, tak berani bercakap, tak berani menegur. Pasal apa, kata kita tidak terdiri sebenarnya. Now, how do you balance? Yeah? And this balancing, I think you know better when you talk about the kind of spirituality that you want to move with. Yeah? So when you talk about story, misalnya macam mana uh, Nabi Musa menegur, apa ni, uh, How do they do this? How do they people beginning to say after all, you know, these are supposed to be quote unquote uh, very powerful yeah? because they have got that within them. Yeah? And we, I think, get lost because when people do wrong, we just keep quiet. And then the university later down become 
uh, place that we need to now recover those kind of things. Yeah. So these are these are the things that I think we need we need to we need to understand. But all of these are already captured <coughs> in a document that I think was uh, not uh, made visible for a long time until very recently. Shukran, Pudilihana, uh, and Dr. told me I tell you this statement. Uh, it is a statement uh, written by your own uh, company, uh, Sheikh at one time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Dean and also now the rector of the university, the third rector, uh, none other than Professor Kamal. Professor Kamal wrote this in 1995, which was 21st, 25 years ago. Yeah? And spell out the mission of the university, they got inspired by worldwide uh, topic. I can't read it, I think you can read it. At the end of it, what holistic education. Coming back to where, where, where we want to go, and also trying to be the best center of learning uh, within you know, uh, Malaysia, if not beyond, and working on three different models. You know? One of which to have intellectual dynamism. Mananya, it turns to me, we must be the thinkers to move things forward. Yeah? You don't move forward just by by doing things uh, at hazard, but how do you think? How do you make it systematically working and stuff like that? And we talk about this review knowledge, how do you combine many things as much as possible to take all disciplines. So now that's why I say it is not just a cool and centric thing, it's a university thing. You need to combine with engineering, you need to combine with all other things that this makes it happen. So that then it becomes it's all we done that we talked about. And then we talk about how do you restore. I'm not happy with what restore. That's why I put the square back out. How do we enhance? Restoring and I can go back to a to a, 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 an era which is not compatible with what is happening today. Yeah? So how do we enhance it to that we become the leading uh, university in all branches of knowledge? I this will all all this money are, are going to be very challenging for us. Yeah? It is not just one, but everything else. How do you put this into place? And finally, this one I'm going to center on. Yeah? That we become the contributor to grading or upgrading human life and civilization. Now, you can go into and Google all mission and university, including the Heba Heba Namuniari. None of them talks about human life and civilization. I can bet you. We are the only university, and the purpose for this certainly is higher than just having to go into ranking and menang and, and this particular, I think it's beyond that. And that's why we don't even entertain this whole idea of ranking, because we are beyond that kind of thing. So how do you make this happen? And I think it's back to Pakistan, back to Rahmat al yeah? Human life and civilization, what else you want? Yeah? How do you make this happen? And these are part and parcel of what we're going to talk about. Hopefully now we have moved into a center of a sustainable, uh, education, how do you retain and, and sustain it as we move forward at, at, at a global level, right? Now we go into the mission. Now when I was here, it is one of my uh, struggle to understand this triple ICE, uh, talk to various people, and again, uh, suddenly when this thing comes up, the same document. Yeah? And the same document talks about something which is more enlightening, just than the triple ICE. Triple ICE is a good acronym but it doesn't spell all the seven, right? So I'm saying at the moment in time, let's put the triple IC belakang sekejap, let's look at the mission. Bring back the mission so that we begin to interpret it. The first one has already been done. We talked about integrating uh, within the radial knowledge and human sciences. I think that will stay. And what about number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and number seven, okay? now. If you look at number two, uh, we are very delighted to see there was sustainable development there. Mananya, for the last 25 years, this university has been advocating sustainable development. So it's nothing new, it's nothing to do with the sixth factor. This is the sixth factor, so happy that it comes across. You know, I didn't know that this entry is small. So, but God works in, it in a very mysterious way. Suddenly, after talking this, and yes, 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 a lot so now the argument whether sustainable development is part of triple ICE, I think is beyond us. It is part of triple ICE, right? And they got the Muslim world, Malaysia, we have done ours. 2019, we have got the summit. Now they got the Muslim world, this is our problem. 
How do you get this across to the Muslim world? Being an RCE now, as I mentioned to you, we have not got a passport to do this. We have not got, you know, a purpose to do this. Yeah? And certainly all this must start with education. It cannot start with anywhere else. Yeah? In fact, if you look at the Sustainable Development Goal 4.7, it mentions exactly that. Yeah? All learners must have the knowledge of sustainable development. And not only sustainable development, they got a sustainable lifestyle. Yeah? And the COVID tells us the lifestyle today is not sustainable. The way we deal with our food, the way we deal with our time, the way we deal with our transportation, all these are not sustainable. And that's why all of us now need to be locked down. Yeah? Once it is locked down, you find that everything is sustainable. The sky is blue again, uh, the river is flowing again, uh, the animals are di sini pun nampak biawak dah keluar, bangau dah ada, beruk pun dah keluar, wild boar pun running into my place, you know. Suddenly, they got enam, enam itu lari into my my compound, you know. If I boleh makan, tangkap, you know. So, all these animals somehow already come out again. Why? Because we are now living in a sustainable way that we are sharing the world with everybody else. Dulu kita je. Dia awak nak keluar pun takut, babi hutan nak keluar pun takut. You know, because manusia is all over the place. Now, I mean, this is a lesson that God really tells us what the COVID-19 is all about. Kita pakai pun dah mula sederhana, tak ada lah. Kita makan pun dah mula, you know, uh, I mean, bulan puasa, eh. I cannot imagine mula more more frugal bulan puasa laut tiga je dulu tujuh tak habis tiga ni pun tak habis so I think these are lessons that we need to learn and this was sustainable development so, so I want to emphasize sustainable development for us is to become better Muslims yeah nothing to do with United Nations person mungkin ada lah on another platform we talked about it but how do you become good Muslim when we learn sustainable development and it says here the other statement that we must be an agent of comprehensive and balanced progress. And that is indeed what sustainable is all about. The 17 goals, yeah, and how do you balance it? So 17 goals must exist. 17 goals are still arbitrary, but it doesn't matter, let's work on it. Yeah? But how do you balance it? And how do you make it sustainable? How do you make it equitable? That, I think the same question, how do you make it fair to everybody else? Yeah? So when we talk about flattening the curve, is that, to me it's about fairness. So that people have equitable access to healthcare when it comes to COVID. All right, so. Then when you look at number six, it talks about something, intercultural exchange. It is only Korea, I think there's a lot of foreign students. Yeah? When you talk about yeah, international and the dialogue, how do you get it Has the dialogue been going on here? Yeah? Uh, we talk about RE2 dengan, dengan, dengan Prof. Yukran, the area, the area studies. Yeah? These are very important ideas how, how we understand the various areas within it because we talk about that across community and across nation. Yeah? And last but not least, mission number seven, they get a deep sense of responsibility. And this is why we move into this idea of community engagement. As part of our responsibility to get people around us also to share the benefits of the university. We are very fortunate. We've got water, we've got electricity, we've got everything else. But think about the people around us. Do they have the same benefit? If they don't, how do you bring it to them? Yeah? And that's the kind of responsibility that we talk about. We're just not us anymore. It is about them also. Yeah. So can we take on this one? You really sit down and analyze. It is a finish number one, number two, number six, and number seven. It is a big part. It is a big and now we need to reintrospect and see whether how can we work on a tree and make it happen at the same time. I think your kulia, other kulia, say, 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 you can pick and choose. But I think your kulia must work on all seven. <laughs> yeah? Because you are the head hancho. Well, head hancho tak buat yang lain kata. The boss pun tak buat, kita buat tiga je lah. They buat dua, they think like that. So I think you must work on, 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 on all, all seven so that you give meaning to them and then they can, they can properly learn from you. Now, as we talked about that, I was also reading what is the latest on education. Yeah? Howard Gardner, you know, Professor of Cognition and Education in Harvard, yeah? wrote fantastic books uh, on multiple intelligence and stuff like that. Now, the latest that he wrote is on this. They got the, what are the challenges ahead for education? They got the most daunting 
to prepare students for citizenship, not only in our country, but globally. And this is what I come back to you the group. Our students get the Hanta Kumanes idea they will survive. Yeah, because they're a global citizen. Muslim not Muslim, a war that war they can survive. That's the mark of our students. Yeah? If they need to go somewhere, you go and then you will perform. How do you create? And that's why I'm beginning to think now whether this idea of global citizenship should be part of the DR curriculum. Yeah? Not, not, may, may not this the art, but maybe the other the art. Yeah, that's not global. Are our students global enough? Already we've got the benefit of Boleh Cakap Arab, Boleh Cakap English, Boleh Cakap Melayu, at least our students. How can we make them more global in that sense? Okay. And those are, those are issues. They got to know. To provide human values and model, uh, it is our language. We are already providing the human values and language that once uh, powerful in many neighborhoods but are now less visible and less compelling. Is real. Yeah? And the Hati makin lama makin kecil ini is what I meant. Right? It doesn't function anymore in terms of the value. The values do not carry weight anymore. I mean, my, my children would you go when I was a, when I was a kid, I do something wrong, my father just said to look at me and I know something is wrong. Yeah? And we begin to adjust Now I look I look at my children and they go, why are you looking at me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> the, the, the sensitivity to not do You know? So how do you bring this back? So then our students themselves become humanistic on a very small Events as happening around us. Pokok jatuh, I will show you my example. Pokok tumbang, what does it mean to us? Yeah. Does it pokok tumbang and therefore let it tumbang? What? When you see a plastic bottle on the road, what does it mean to us? Do we pick it up? Or do we just never mind it that we are able to see it in the media? Yeah. Our toilets are dirty, what does it do? What do we do? And these are the things that I think we need to be sensitive about as as students and as people of it. They have to help the young people develop the sense of agency of change making. Does that have the sense? Does, do, do we want to make this change happen as quickly as possible? Yeah? And like I said, to make sure heightened sense of personal agency and purpose appropriate to the broader society and can be publicly uh, justified. I'm putting this so that we can now measure yang apa Prof. Kamal tulis 25 tahun yang dulu dengan yang 25 tahun sekarang, does it fit? If it doesn't fit, what can we adjust? They have to adjust or we have to adjust how to make this happen. Yeah? I think this is what it is what the purpose is all about. Is to help young people become comfortable with technologies, but they are the caveat. They have to, to use technologies in the way that's appropriate and ethical. Are we using this? Look at our social media. Yeah. Are we using it in an appropriate way and ethical way? Kalau tidak, siapa dengan John? We are doing the academic review now. We are putting this into the academic review. In other words, you understand technology in that way, how to use it for the better rather than just for the purpose of menyakit nanti. Yeah. And the other one of special importance and of great challenge to provide tools and guidance so that all individuals can continue to learn throughout the This is exactly what you're doing. The mosque with your clergy, the mental health with your clergy, whatever else, you're providing this guideline and tools so that we know which direction we are going for. So as we understand our mission statements, you know that the world is moving. How do you grapple with this? So that we are not lost in this you know, uh, competition or in this movement forward. So that's the work and he is doing this for the uh, well-being 2030 for Europe. Yeah, he was engaged by 2030 Europe to understand the money Europe not jadi 10 years from now. And those are the values that they're putting in. How do we measure and how do you also company uh, work with them on, on, on things of that measure, right? This is just, uh, uh, again, uh, to understand where we are. We want to go to the moon. Uh, before we go to the moon, you should understand how the moon is created and the moon is created to a crescent. 
and the person is our person is like this. On the other there will be no mood if there is the person is not doing well. Yeah? And the person by desire is what we call the institutional readiness. Are we ready? Yeah? What are we ready on? All the things that relate to the university, the falsafa, yeah? Yeah? and how it relates to the sustainable development goal now is mission two. Yeah? How do you make this campus a sustainable campus that we have described it to you? Are we responsible for the for the company and for the existence of the campus in its physical form? How do we put Makassid in it? What does Garden of Knowledge and Virtue mean for us? How do we make leading the way? All these certificates are assembled by it, yeah, under under Pani, under the new academic review, so that everybody understands it. So when I talk to Shukran and I talk to Aslina, the Tambunari, jawapan yang lebih kurang sama. Yeah, tidak seorang pergi Sumban, tidak seorang nak pergi Dumas. Ah, dah kita, saya nak pergi Kota Baru pula. Ah, uh, then you will fight and you will not reach very well. So how do we make this consistent among ourselves, among our students, including our board members, including now Insyaallah the minister. We have invited the minister. But uh, the way we need to understand why are you so sort of and prepare to come uh, I think we're looking at okay, we'll go over. but by the time they come I hope that we also understand we have to understand we have to understand we have to so we have two months to put our house in order so that they can launch one book and he will mingle with you uh, by the time he mingles with you I'm sure he will ask some some nasty questions but I'm not sure but anyway our work is to make sure that uh, we are ready institutionally and at the Puya level I think that's not too much to ask. Yeah? Once you're ready, then you can go to the Okulia. Then the Okulia can work the processes, which is the pink thing, and inshallah we'll go to the orange thing, and finally this humanizing uh, education, a holistic education, the way you put it, doesn't matter. And so we are ready to, to, to actually to, to, to deliver in that particular context. And hopefully, uh, in the same way, get the full moon, Mulan from Nama, hopefully not too, not too far. Mulan that we will go, we don't have to Okay. Right. So what is your move? This is, this is the message to you. So these are the changes that we need to do. I think the first change, you know, we cannot work alone anymore. We need to work together. Your kulia must work with as many kulias as possible. I think your kulia should be work with Wiki every. Then you can spread this message of IRKHS. So you need to play a very big role in trying to influence others why this combination of reveal and uh, this human science becomes, becomes important. I think they must, and, and also I was thinking all the departments need to understand this. Okay? The students need to understand it. So working together, uh, whatever you call it, we call it uh, polarcratic, but there can be other words for it. Uh, in our case, shura, uh, uh, whatever it is, I think it, it is also welcome. But for this to work, by this idea, you need to have self-leadership. I think the president talked about this during, during the during accusation dinner and lunch. But Manani, we are all leaders. doesn't matter whether they are the pankat, are the pankat, are the namu, are the namu. We are all leaders. We are responsible for our leadership. Okay? So we need to work right now, not only uh, in, 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 in material times, but also virtually. And virtually becomes an issue. Because until I have trust, then the virtual world will not work. If I don't trust Shukran, uh, it will not work. And Shukran doesn't trust me, it will not work. Yeah. So this whole idea of one supervising the other should not happen anymore. You should be supervising yourself. All right. So uh, my way, my way of working is that way. I give you this, you work because I trust you, and therefore your work must be up to a certain level. I've tried this, I mean, I've, I think I've lived long enough. But when I ask somebody to do it, and they tell me, why? They tell me, why? You know, I have to rework. Oh, ma, okay, the bubur, the T must be crossed again. I need to dot the I. You know, this attention to details that I do. And they tell me, that's it, that's it. I'm going to go, and you're going to go. So I don't want to force people to do this, because they will do it, but they will do it much so now kita belajar there is this work from home but ours is work from anywhere yeah. and anytime and anyone right so it could be somewhere in the shopping mall but i know you're working alhamdulillah yeah 
uh, you can be somewhere in the bus but you are working alhamdulillah so there is no problem pukul jika pagi pun you are working that will be better you know? because any time you can do that but sometimes you so this question of mesti nak clock in 40 jam semua tu I think this a a fake of your imagination no? yeah uh, we need to start thinking that I want to work because I want to work. And somebody said w, w, WFA2 is a work for Allah. If that's the thing that you take, then I think you should not be complaining. Yeah? And if you think nobody is supervising you, you'll be, you'll be surprised. Somebody else is supervising you. Right? But this is a bigger thing. Uh, I think now, Alhamdulillah, they've got a new DR. Yeah? Uh, he's got to work on it, I can't even give you. Oh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm fully confident that I think we'll get this away. Uh, we've broadened up the space for intellectual discourse. So, tidak payah deal one, tidak payah all these other scopers, uh, these are maybe yesteryears, but we say, right, and we have already agreed with the Senate that these are the journals that you think it is important for you. Scopus tak scopus tak okay. We control what we think is important. As long as you publish in that journal, we will consider that as a journal that is worthy for publishing. Right? So we are now also encouraged to write uh, uh, in the uh, in, in, in newspapers and I'm happy to see every day other Jogang I place a newspaper. One, the last one is Star. Uh, you, you, so we want to compile that inshallah. Yeah? Uh, write and write because at the end of the day, the internet world is like this. I, I will tell you this. Yeah? Uh, I am not even an expert, but if I write often enough in the internet, suddenly I become an expert. Because I'm the only one they know. The expert who doesn't write, I can, you know, in the internet I can say that this guy is wrong. Because as far as the internet is concerned, I'm the expert. It's become unfortunate for a lion the expert to become expert just because he or she writes. That you are the expert because you are very quiet, nobody knows you. I think the, 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 the idea is basically to get yourself exposed. When you talk about the stage a little, the moment you expose, then people will write to you and say, can you talk about this? That is a key to your success. The moment you get into the stage, you perform, and they will invite you again, you are done. Or you will perform and they don't invite you again, you are finished. I mean, there's a simple thing that you need to think of. So how do you get this broadcasted? Of course, the net must be right now. But the net means to, um, to, get, to get famous, I think it's not too real. Yeah? So we talk about open access, we talk about open, open resource, so that the, 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 the vista for you to perform is broader. Some people can write, some people can do something else. Whatever it is, it's of interest, you go ahead. And therefore, we are revising a number of things. We are not talking about the Ta'aruf, I think the Gambang will be the first experiment. We have gone there, we have talked to 300 people uh, for the first time, academic and non-academics together. I think they are going to launch it next week tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, so we've got a team that can talk about Fasafa, Pendidikan, Pansa, and they can team that talk about uh, sustainable development, they have a team that talks about uh, Makassib. Yeah? So everybody now is given that that task and I think inshallah if it works there, it can work anywhere else. Eh? And for us, yang tak ada tak roof, the FI students and Sydney, we are now going to work again with the Center for Professional Development. So all of us, mungkin dalam two days maybe we'll spend that you are now also being exposed. What are all this so that we all understand it in the same frame of mind. Yeah? So if we got into this, uh, don't, don't, don't grumble and don't uh, talk. Don't and then I think the tablet is that uh, the community. When you cannot talk about Rahmat Tanil Alamin without talking about the community. So the community is a target for us because the community, we belong to the community and we need to give back to the community whatever it is. Eh? So your flagship becomes important and I agree I don't have to talk about this flagship. The number of flagships that you've done and I think successfully, that after two or kai kai you still in that show. I'm still there. I don't have to be to recognize it. And the question of mental health, again, is your forte. Yeah? Uh, I know you have been building this and I'm very happy 
Now we have now been we consulted by OIC tanya macam mana kita boleh work with, with the non-Muslim countries yang yang ada uh, yang ada problems yeah. So we are now trying to to, to send them a proposal so that they can fund us. Yeah. Uh, we are now working with the under commission on mental health. So why? Because we already since still we already projected ourselves. All the newspaper articles that you wrote and stuff like that people suddenly contacted. Why can't you do this with us? And I say yes. Why not do this? So we're opening the doors uh, to move forward. Yeah? We're talking about hygiene and cleanliness and stuff like that. So when 2030 super era, when the goal ends at 2030, where are we? Yeah. When I go down the where are we? When the whole exercise gets done, how do we how do we work it? Yeah? Uh, the other thing is what I mentioned to you about COVID learning. It's just a summary of understanding that COVID we see we we need to collaboratively work together, cooperate with one another, don't just compete. Competing and economic can be a barrier. You know, I want to share with you. When I share with Farid, we saw the Jadi Professor Sahita, the Professor, you know, my SL, you know, put it at me, I want to be the professor first. Right? But because I don't ski, that is good. Yeah? So if I share with him, the ski say by I got the professorship, and he also got the professorship. But Alhamdulillah. But this kind of competition is sometimes the selfishness is something that you need to be mindful of. Right? Oh, how we work together, it open in an open way. No hidden agendas. Yeah, when I want to do this because I want to sincerely help you or other way around. So always also out of the box. Think something that nobody has thought before. Uh, in, in my last uh, career when I say one Pakistan project, you tell me, if somebody done this before, they say yes, let's forget it, let's do something else. Yeah, we get something out that I mean, nobody has done. And this university is about that. And nobody has done an university like this. V is about values. Where are the values? We talk about human values study. I is about inclusiveness. Yeah. Everybody must be on board as long as they are interested and they are willing to, to get the money to, 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 to contribute. And this is about diversity. You can entertain as many ideas as possible. Also, just reading uh, the other day, the other. progress is about recognizing ideas, including fake ones. Because the fake one will put things into perspective whether it can work or not. So, any ideas will be, will be entertained. So, I used to write, and you must have read, that we are about the authority of ideas, not the ideas of authority. I can be a, I can be a, a rector, but if the idea, then nothing to shout about. You can be a road sweeper, but you've got plenty of ideas, then you should be the rector. The rector should be the road sweeper. See, ideas is important rather than the authority. I think it's something that is, we differ from the corporate world. Corporate world CEO, we see, Cakap bodoh pun kita dengar je. I mean, look at Dr. Trump. He speaks something that is very ugly, but I want to pull you with it. Hydrochloroquine, I know that he will be drunk in the line of policy. They got to pull you with it. I do what you want, guys. Clorox can, can, can clean COVID. There are some people who clean Clorox. I mean, it's beyond, beyond imagination. So, I think it's important not, not, not leadership per se in that sense. Yeah? So, these are the things that you need to look at. Yeah, but in the context of sustainable development study and, and where we are in The KIPC, I think I've mentioned to you, I think it's about how do we actually bring this idea on intellect, intellectual level. It will be a strength on intellectuality. So somebody was telling me, I mean, look, I did not check up in a country that I'm LGBT and tell me, look, and you talk to the country LGBT on an intellectual level. And now they bring this whole idea of gender dysphoria. They don't have any gender dysphoria, LGBT is not in Allah. And all the, uh, the human rights issue. So if you take another, another discussion on another plane, you may put it off balance and you can get your idea across. How do you do this? So that at the end of the day, we can get what I call this gratification. It will be baki bali. It will be shukur, it will be payback, yeah? whatever we have got from other people. How do you pay this back? And that becomes part and parcel of the purpose of this university. To give back to other people that we have the borrow of taken from. Yeah? And then this is what the, the word sejahtera comes in, we'll talk about it later. And the word sejahtera comes in by desire in the context of how we create balance, how we create comprehensiveness, how we put in fact sustainable development in this context. Yeah? And Surah Ibrahim uh, gives me a nice Surah Ibrahim comes to me almost uh, 
uh, almost uh, accidentally when I start to read, they have a good tree. A good tree, the other one can anchor well, that you know this better. Yeah? If it's not anchored well, then it, it falls down. Um, and therefore, we are talking about what are the principles and how we arrive at a purpose, and what are the conduct that we need to do, and what are the values that we need. And if we can balance this together, inshallah, I think we will be okay, as long as you don't connect. And you use the banyak sangat ni pun tak kena ni. And when you do all sorts of use, then I think you get into another another mess, and that mess sometimes like this. I think you do, probably do not know this because it's happened in the other side of the campus. And unless you play rugby, you know. And you don't play rugby, you probably don't know. And these are three that, that I come across when I go to my house. Satu pagi, satu hujan, saya tengok pukul itu bang. And itu bang ni, I always find a purpose why pukul itu bang. Suddenly I saw the roots are not there. Maybe the roots. Maybe my 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 bottle is not good, but I don't see any roots. Yet. And the pokok is in soil. And how can it feel like that sustain when there's no roots? But what is more important is the date. The date is go pro May 2020. Go pro May is the date. The date that the university is established in 18, in 1983. It's our 37th anniversary. So I'm asking myself, my God, what is the signal, what is the message here that this Koko de Tumba on the 37th anniversary are we greeting into? Can you answer to May, June, July, you know? What are we getting into? What's it to? Bring down the Palina. Bring down the June. July, July. So I, I cannot sleep that day. I'm looking at an upward issue. Isyarat ini apa signal ini What is this you know, I'm just finishing my second contract The first contract ini Banyak cerita ini So you look around you And suddenly you find the many things that you need to learn And this is why I'm saying that you know, Whatever is around us We need to be sensitive And then how to make a man choice right? So I want to go back to what Harvard Gardner says Bila dia kata collective well-being Kalau kita nanti ke world sejahtera Dia dalam sini taking Again, the Western subject in the idea, they got that collective well-being is able to work with others for common good. The importance of collective well-being is what Sajjata is all about to us. The common good, how do you get this common good on board? Yeah? A cooperative method requires both belief in the importance of cooperation and the skill and the knowledge to do it effectively. All right? Unless human beings they got that, can learn to live together peacefully and cooperatively, they will be, uh, the world will be an undesirable place and indeed there may be, uh, we may not be a world at all. I think these are, these are precisely what we are facing today. We cannot live together, we cannot have this cooperative, uh, the coexistence, uh, we will be. So, these are something that they have said, but we have said this long time before. The only thing is that we have not realized it and they are trying to realize it. Yeah? So just to give you what they are trying to do now in the West, they are trying to say, look, the well-being need will be the sustainability well-being and we need to create the material wealth. The material wealth here, bagi, bagi dia, will then create this quality of life. Yeah? The question I'm asking them is basically, will this be sustainable? COVID tell us it's not sustainable. All right? If it's not sustainable, what is it that makes it sustainable? Suddenly you find there are other factors coming in. And what is the factors? The factors is the human heart. Yeah? Uh, this one I think I'll, I'll talk to you. So what is the factors? And this is where we are now beginning to look at what are the scenarios forward. Inshallah, by the end of this month or maybe early next month, we'll get UNESCO chair for sustain for future studies. Adaptation for future Adaptation for sustainability and well-being. Okay. So, but anyway, this chair is to try to focus what is the future for us. And I think that we will be the center to sort of describe what the future will possibly look like. Okay. And this is just a, a diagram that, that I mean, we all know this about blockchain and stuff like that. Yeah. But whether this is too, that depends on Pagidia, the kind of uh, economic metrics that you can look at. This is part of the, uh, the slide that I showed the, the, the can say, right? But what is interesting that I mean, they got the kind of there is this 
transition that will go into what they call the human 2.0. Saya cukup takut dengan istilah-istilah ini. Yeah. If they begin to predict what is human 2.0 is about, what is it? How do you fathom this? How do you make sense from the Islamic point of view? Could it be the Dajjal and not the You know? So these are areas that I think we need to start looking at, understanding, go back to the Quran, you are good in it, I'm not. But how, what, what can you, what can you do? Tapi dia kata juga, there must be this next generation education. So, this education must be contributing to that. Yeah? Otherwise, you will not get this 2.0. Right? And then dia kata, there are other things. And sharing economy, lah, making economy, lah, circular economy. Lah. So, the question is basically, how do you mold this? What sort of education system you go to economically, or psychologically, or whatever you have with you in the context of human science? and bringing in the real knowledge at the same time. So these are issues that I think we need to grapple with beyond just the everyday or the standard way of asking questions, right? There's another statement that I think is important. This lady here is the Secretary General of ICTU, International Trade Union Congress. Dia mengatakan, and it's well, well accepted, the current economic model is inequality in its design. Yeah, if this is the case, then I think, how do you put this right? How do you question this? It is not Islamic, it is memory designed for inequality. Yeah? And how do you know this? Because the same guy uh, needs another, another, another Jewish family, but not quite different language. You can say it's a rich economy designed for the wealthiest people, uh, blah, 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 in the country, and at the expense of everybody else. Kalau ini betul, then there is something fundamentally wrong with the education system that we inherit today. And what is it that we need to put it back? So these are these are comments that I think that needs to be that needs to be done. I I, I just talk about the scenario planning. Scenario planning, can only talk about this four things: past the political, economic, social, and technology. This is what we see today. When you talk about political, it's about power. And in Malaysia, we need to like all the like, politicians are all about rush. Rush for power. Yeah? Economics about revenue. Education for Masu Liga. You bring international students not because of education, because of revenue. They cannot pay with Habib Hala or anybody. Yeah? And we, are, we, are, we should be working at the bank, not at the uh, university. And the rest are bailouts. Pelaksana, lah, penjana, lah, segala ini, all are about bailouts. Yeah? And finally, it is about speed. How to make it happen tomorrow? Right? And these are the considerations that we have. But when COVID comes in, this whole thing changes. It doesn't talk about power anymore. It talks about the human dimension, the physical human being, the emotional part, the spiritual part, and what is it that we are trying to get at. I think this way, your 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 bidang is. That's why I'm quite happy when to see COVID tell us different. Yeah. You need to fight this so that you can get into the real substance. What is the real substance? The human being. And that's why in, in sometimes, since I'm not an economist, I can buy anything, they can criticize that with it. Uh, <laughs> so I talk about well-being, sejahtera, economy sejahtera. What can we create another something like that? That answers all these questions. Yeah. Is your economy, economy serving the spirituality of the human being? That is answer the emotional part. Yeah? Is it guided by truth as a revealed knowledge comes and tells us? Or do we just go by somebody else's theory or hypothesis and things like that? Yeah? Uh, so, question of livelihood and life. What is more important? Do you need op to open the, the economy when people's real life are threatened? And this is the experiment that Americans are doing. They talk to you about the people that the economy is not. Which is more important to us? Are these are questions that I think that we need to do, and therefore this whole idea of humanizing economy may be a, a, a substance or an area that you need to work on. Right? So just like anything else, flattening the curve, and I think we try to get equitability as much as possible, while we clean corruption and stuff like that. But we need to we need to flatten the curve, and this is where I thought you would do that. Yeah. That could be the deep. <laughs> <laughs> how, 
how do you flatten the curve back to the Islamic principle of equity between justice, fairness, and stuff like that? I'm sure we can do it in one way or another. We need to reinterpret it. We need to argue about it. But I don't think we need to take the model from what the Western people just give us all the time. Right? So this is my way of doing it. I'm, I'm taking this a challenge. I trust it's just to see if I, if I can and I ask Vienna. Does this make sense now? Like, okay, you can try it. I'm going to try it. She's not here somehow. Right? But I've got a monster here, please. Uh, Harvey. Try to make it better. So, but this idea, like, so hanya, what are we trying to do in the is to go back to what our Fikra is all about. The little that I know about Fikra, we are, we are born with it. God has educated us through Fikra, but somehow it is lost in the education system. Yeah? The Fikra of Bagi Sayyid is a natural balancing act of how to be a human being with the challenges around the world and so on. That was what it means. It's rotating, it's evolving all the time, and we need to meddle that, to do balance it. Yeah. So we are, we are given this uh, movement, I think, Bagi Sayyid, Muslim is not a human being, Muslim is a human becoming. We are, we, are, we are expressing ourselves better every day. I must be better today than compared to tomorrow. I think there's a hadith that talks about. Yeah? How do you make this movement forward yeah, in our old ways? Yeah? To do that, you need to deal with this thing called the ego. The ego is about me and me and Rula. Uh, I don't care about everybody else. Everybody else. So, uh, the inciting ego, I think that's the other one, the Amara we talked about. Right? And the Amara is basically manipulated by this guy. I mean, this guy does not sleep. That's why sometimes we do not sleep also. So we need to deal with it. Maybe here. I'm not sure. Alright? So how do you deal with that? Then I think this whole concept of jihad comes in. The internal jihad. They fight it. This fighting that every day that we need to question ourselves. Yeah? The inciting then becomes the, the self-accusing. I keep on asking myself, what is my answer? Another uh, question you ask yourself, and suddenly you find the answers come out first. Your ego is too big. Alright? Issues of that nature, we begin to question ourselves. Now, we cannot be fighting this alone until we mobilize two things. And this is where your Kuliah comes in, Your mind and your heart. These are the reinforcement that you need. If you don't educate these two, then you go on fighting and probably lose the better. Because that guy is, I think, a very vicious guy. Okay. So how do you think? This is where I begin to make sense why this kuliah is so important. Kalau ini tidak dibetul dengan ini dengan kefahaman yang betul, then this becomes a very bloody battle. Alright, because we don't have the reinforcement, we don't have the ilmu, we don't have the techniques, we don't have the tools. So how do you do this to so arrive at the peace with yourself? At the end of the day, if you have peace with yourself, I don't really care about anyone else. Okay. Sometimes people escape from that because we are at peace with ourselves. Sometimes we are so rich, we are never at peace with ourselves and we see so many things happening around us. So that is the attainment of Isaiah Kesudahana, which is the truth. Where do you arrive at the truth? And that's why I talk about the truth bound. Okay? And the truth is basically where you can mobilize your internal resources that you don't depend on anything outside anymore. You become self-confident, self-sufficient, and that's where the education takes us. The education at the end of the day gives us this wiseness, this wisdom of how to think, of how to act, and how to be guided by this makasit that we talked about. Yeah? And this makasit will be the kind of objective that decides whether we are in the right path as a Kundila. Right? And it has to be balanced, and this is where I thought the Isan Sajjantra is all about. It could be the human 2.0, I'm not too sure, but, but at the end of the day, we want to work on this kind of a model. Why do you want to do this? Because we are going back to where we were. I mean, the Mati Mesot, inshallah, we are already there in the context of what we are supposed to do. Yeah? This is my dream, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but you can talk about it. If I'm wrong, you can put it right. Uh, if I'm right, then how do you work it out? Yeah? So the 2.0 is where is the guidance? And this is where I'm coming back. It doesn't take a KPI. The human 2.0, only if we go back to the prophet, which is this one. 
live moderately katanya I cannot read this very well uh, talk softly uh, walk humbly mana KPI ni? if the prophet walks humbly what is a KPI? there's no KPI yeah? it's a matter of how you train yourself to be that person that you ought to be and so this overemphasis on KPI sometimes kills us because we have got the numbers that is wrong okay? uh, there's many things that, that, uh, that we can, we can deal with it Okay. And finally, I just want to emphasize on the last part. The fact of the Prophet do everything almost in, 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 a, in a way that is very uh, moderate, but when it comes to here, they're going to take five courages. We need to speak, we need to tell, we need to work, and we need to be you know, courageous when it's wrong. And the problem with us, sometimes academic, we need to say, Salah, we need to say, Salah, we need to say, Salah, we need to I, I, I don't think it is our rule. Our rule is to speak up. Of course, we cannot check up right up. Okay? But we need to tell them when it's wrong, they're wrong. And then we take it from there. Right? So I think this will be the kind of mission that I hope you we will think of. But you know, to quote something else in the air, so to say, educating the mind without educating the heart is not education at all. Right? Long time. And this is, according to this, uh, Steve Jobs, not a religious person, but talk something similar. Yeah, okay? Uh, don't let the voice of others drown your own inner voice. To me, that probably is a fit trap. Yeah? The most important is the courage to follow the heart and intuition. Uh, they somehow or other know what you want, and the rest are secondary. Alright, I think that's, that's a kind of. Uh, and, but finally, this is what the WHO says, the UNESCO says. Yeah? They can take this education of the heart. And they're beginning to work on this now, 2014. But if we can do this better than UNESCO, why not? Right? Why do we need to wait for UNESCO to do this? I think we need to grab this and run and interpret it the way I do. Yeah. So I would like to end by, by imagining that you are now there working together, not the six of you, the whole of you. Yeah? Working out and delivering, giving things that which is out of the ordinary and I think we have got the capacity to do it. And inshallah. We can have our Nyan Putun, we probably arrive at the point that we need to arrive here. So I want to stop here. Thank you very much for your kind attention. If there's any question, if there's anything that you want to add on, I'm quite happy to listen to you. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Francis. From uh, lighting impressive, fresh lens, lens uh, for the Kuya. The ideas are very beneficial for us to improve whatever we have been doing so far. Yes. Like uh, four points that I would like to highlight here, that is, um, the presentation that you have uh, made just now are very essential for us to substantiate and uh, improve the establishment and this is and definitely uh, what we have mentioned will be added to the plan. Uh, you also mentioned about Genuine visibility. So I take from you that uh, we have to be doing something which is noise in itself. We don't have to do things just to make noise, but we have to do things which are impactful, then the noise will come automatically. Yes, and the last point is about SDG and whatever activities that we do, then we have uh, to uh, relate it to the domain of knowledge that we champion here. Yeah? Uh, human sciences and scientific knowledge. So in this Korea, we have been trying very hard to apply both um, Islamic revealed knowledge and human sciences principles integrated uh, in offering solutions uh, to the uh, community that we are dealing with. Uh, from that, uh, I'd like to write here that we have about 13 Korea level center of excellence. This center of excellence is have been championing research, publication, and also consultancy, okay, which uh, involve uh, the application of uh, behavioral sciences principles and knowledge, plus the some uh, principles as well. Uh, before we open the floor to the uh, audience here, I would like to share with you uh, the highlight uh, of the Korea uh, since uh, last year. Uh, the detailed highlights and uh, the detailed information are listed in this uh, booklet, right? I don't uh, plan to go through every page okay, except that uh, there are points that I want to share with you and the rest of your presentations here. Right? Uh, this uh, presentation is divided into four. Number one is the Korea's uh, focus. 
that we are scaling and teaching core businesses our way forward and our expectation from uh, the university management and also relevant KCDIOMs uh, that are with us today. Right? Uh, the focus of uh, the Kuria has been informed or directed by the Kuria's, um, sorry, by the university's ethos, uh, which we learned from the educational philosophy, the vision and vision. The IUM current direction, they will substantiate the IUM ethos. They, and, uh, they also support the Kuya mission and vision. The scan needs of various groups of community and local community. So we have been engaging the neighboring community, uh, the state level community, and even international community. Uh, since uh, last year, we have worked with MOS in Bomba area. Eventually, we have engaged uh, MOS in all districts in Salamo. And uh, in Ramaka and this year, we have engaged uh, eight mosques um, outside Malaysia. Right? So we have done some dialogues with Imam and uh, President of uh, Islamic Center for as well. Right? So that is for our mosque. <coughs> project. Yes, uh, as I mentioned just now, our activities are being formed by our ethos, mainly our educational philosophy. Uh, if you study the seven IUM education philosophy, they are rich with uh, value-based documents or value-based statements. Right, so the color there uh, are in green, I mean that green color uh, statement are uh, talking about values that we should be advocating, educating, and the word that we have to use here is edifying, okay? Edifying our students and our academics as well as our community members. Right, so we have been informed by this philosophy. We have been also uh, working hard uh, to attain our vision. And when we scan to the vision of IIM, so we found that it befits the uh, roles of the university as uh, suggested by UNESCO, right? which are the educational roles, the intellectual roles, as well as the social roles. Uh, in educational roles, uh, we are equipping our individual uh, students as well as uh, staff and academics as well as societal members as well, yeah? Uh, you have rightly mentioned the uh, domain, I mean, the component of human being uh, which has to be molded, uh, the spiritual, intellectuals, and so forth. Uh, for intellectual roles, uh, we have been uh, conducting community-driven or community-needed research. So I know our research are not domain-orientated anymore, but they are problem-orientated. Right, so last year's January, we have conducted focus group discussion with uh, six villages, I mean, eight men uh, in this room. So from there, we have collected issues uh, that should be turned into research topics and titles. Right, so that is uh, uh, to play our intellectual roles in relation with our societal roles. And our social roles, yeah, is very much uh, on developing and highly employable language as well as a uh, good citizen. And I think I would like to mention here that uh, our focus is not only on employability, but also the graduateness or common jadian of our graduates as stated and enshrined in the philosophy yeah. now. Right? Okay. So we go beyond employability, yeah. but graduateness of our students. That would be the field. So we are interested the mission, the seven mission. For that, uh, we have uh, sliced this seven mission from different perspectives, different angles. Uh, not only to take up the four triple ICE, the integration, Islamization, internationalization, and comparative excellence. Uh, we have also um, identified uh, a number of other tasks from this mission. Uh, this is just to what we call that uh, act in our toolbox, uh, tool our toolbox in managing this school, yeah? right? So we have had uh, four additional roles right, to play in um, strengthening our school, yeah? so that this school yeah, is relevant uh, not only among her community but also other school yeah, in a sense. Right? So these are our references yeah, as uh, has been given by Austin, right? Okay, so this is the elevated mission that all of us know. 
Okay, this is the Korean mission to become center of educational excellence and research in Islamic Arabian knowledge and human sciences. And our mission correspond well to the seven uh, mission of the university. So we have uh, this statement, uh, thanks to and all audience here, the entire statement in the time the last time uh, that we um, were guided by uh, last year. So last year when we started, uh, the focus was on positioning the Kulia for sustainable development goals okay, from campus to the community. So we have sent our students, our staff outside, okay, work with the community members. We have engaged six campo okay, nearby uh, Gomba area. And this year, okay, we are enhancing our focus. Okay, we are working on nurturing community-oriented holistic scholars as well as students for sustainable futures. So these are all deliberated in the movement. Right? If you were to look at all your activities, yeah. would you be able to summarize the findings? Okay. So I'm thinking maybe another one that is good for green gum. Uh, nobody has tested, attempted, accepted this. Uh, maybe it could be something that we can profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we are going to have a workshop soon yeah. to finalize our findings. We plan to visit the OBG again okay, to learn from him or what else he expects okay, from uh, the Mosque connection. We have given him uh, the interim report since that he's happy with that. Okay, so this is our general members okay, representing 10 departments and um, one uh, general studies department. All right, so this is what we mentioned just now, the missions of the university when we went to the seven again, uh, necessitate us uh, to have four main roles and related as he. Right? Humanizing education. So uh, when we were in the workshop the other day with Paris, uh, we tried to understand the meaning of humanizing education. So there we learned that humanizing education requires us to have uh, comprehensive, orchestrated effort to edify and to educate our students. We use the word edify because uh, we are giving them value-based education. Nobody transferring knowledge okay, for their own benefit, but for them to survive later on with the community. So these are values which are stated and enshrined in our philosophy, which we might have taken for granted. Right? So with the curriculum review that we are doing now, we are translating uh, those values into our program education objective and program learning outcome. PLO and PLO that we are now rewriting okay, are informed by the education process. Of, uh, you are beginning to do this or you have done this? Uh, we, we have uh, started in our uh, curriculum review. Okay? So this is what we are now doing, uh, focusing on. Right, so number two is edifying individuals and the process to change individuals, improve them, or to develop them and their behaviors so as to ensure their greatness, as I mentioned this now. Okay, the third one is uh, to strengthen this dysphoria, uh, uh, the term used in the literature of higher education is valorization, valorizing education or valorizing this institution. We are now uh, telling our academics of their actual rules, that we are not here only to teach. We are not here only to deal with teaching and learning processes, but the other ones as well. The knowledge generation and knowledge dissemination. So that is the narrative now. We are not talking about publication, publication for KPI, for promotion, but we are talking about our amana here to generate knowledge, and that knowledge that we generate through research should be disseminated for their benefits. So we are talking about genuinely impactful research, genuinely impactful publication. We hope that these are not mere rhetorical, but something that uh, we can acknowledge, appreciate, and translate in our daily uh, work activities. Have you got a role model, Professor Kamal himself is a role model? Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes we need to see role models because it are, we imagine that we cannot do it. And the last roles that we are now focusing from the question is engaging communities. So we are talking about mutually beneficial engagement with 
agencies inside the university for the engineering, for the of medicine. We have been working in this area of uh, uh, medicine, uh, right? Medicine, um, education, um, architecture, ICT. So we are going to enhance our collaboration with them, as well as our collaborations outside, uh, outside uh, the Korean University. Inshallah, uh, in December, on December the fourth, we are going to sign an OA and OU and also term of references with 28 agencies that we have been working together with. Okay, okay so these are our core businesses um, which are also done in other areas. Uh, the enablers for our Korea activities are the flagship. We have four flagships that we are hosting. Uh, the establishment of a center of excellences at Korea level. Uh, we have five uh, center of excellences which are registered under RMC. The engagement with the uh, community in Goma area, uh, we have also engagement with philanthropies outside Malaysia as well, but because of COVID, they withdraw recently. Right? And um, we are engaging also uh, competent uh, and scholarly academics from outside. Uh, we have effective leaders at the MC level, we have also competent young leaders in the Korea, which we are now growing as well. Uh, we have um, seven student associations which we are currently rebranding so that uh, they are not only working on welfare, they are also behaving like an uh, intellectual uh, group of job students in that sense. Okay? And competent PG students. We have a uh, good number of PG students. We are now uh, regarding them as student researchers okay? who are working together with us for genuine impactful research and publication activities. Right, so this is our governance um, under the junior year of Korea. We have a Korea board members, we have uh, Korea management meeting members, we have uh, undergraduate committee meeting, uh, we have um, Korea Sajastra committee, we have, uh, yes, uh, we have the uh, employee assistance program coordinator, okay, just uh, to ensure that we have some good level of well being. Right? And we also include student association in the junior year as well, so that whatever mission, whatever thinking we have, we cascade it down to the students level as well. Now, our masterpieces in 2020, uh, that 2020, uh, which launching is now delayed to December because of COVID. Um, we remember in UMC we suggested that our uh, 30th anniversary is to be launched by the Majesty uh, Constitutional Day, but I think we have to revise that uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is on the 4th of December. 4th of December, okay. 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 And then That's when you establish it, before the level. Uh, we established as in July, but we couldn't do that uh, because of this COVID. Uh, curriculum review and curriculum development 2020. Uh, it has started since uh, October 2019. Uh, we are not rushing, as in the waiting in time. We study all the documents so that we are not only governed by the NPA standards, but by the ethos, by the book, by the system. Right? But this one needs to check with this. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are very much governed by the SAF, the Stratra Academic Framework. At Krim Academy, we have it uh, in June. The IMPACT, alhamdulillah, we are now uh, still working on this IMPACT. Uh, IMPACT stands for I am Mental Health and Psycho Social Support Team. We are even now extending our psychological help to our colleagues uh, in engineering and just students as well. Right, so we have uh, started our uh, work uh, with uh, Majid Islam and our orientation is biological, psychological, social, and spiritual. What is the status with the MPA? Uh, no. no. Should we write a reminder? We have, we are in contact, but we are busy with the Okay, uh, ISUFIC is international seminar on the roles of university in responding to psychosocial issues. Uh, this is uh, in relation to your visit to Riau University, so post-visit, okay, they have come to us asking us to work with them 
for a number of activities. And last year we conducted this seminar. This year we are going to have another one, and we are expanding it to other Islamic universities in the region. Right? And inshallah, we are launching the uh, International Society for the roles of university responding to cycles of the issues in the community. Right? So thank you for, for that I mean, uh, initial work. Scholarship advancement program. Uh, scholarship, like this is an effort to encourage our academics to work on knowledge generation and dissemination. So we started this last year. So this year, uh, the scholarship enhancement program has been um, accidentally brought earlier because of the COVID time, right? So alhamdulillah, uh, our members, the 260 members have managed to publish 320 uh, work in journals, book chapter, a newspaper, online journal, and as well as magazine. For 2020? Until now. Until now. Uh, from January until June 30th, we have 320 books by the number. Right? In terms of books? Book chapter. Book chapter. Books, books are in, in part line. But, uh, uh, Farid, how many books do we have? Target is 30, 30. Target is 30, 30. We also have translated books. Okay, the way, the way forward, huh? developing favorable scenario for the Kuya, that was 2030, so we had, had a number of workshops, I see. And just to share with you, uh, last month uh, we had a workshop, dialogue workshop, where we think of uh, how we should be yeah, in the year 20 and you know, right? So we had 10 groups, and each group had contributed their imagination of how the Kuya should look like. So these are the uh, 10 metaphors contributed by the 10 groups and the number that talk about the, the group number. Yeah. Right, so we have combined this. Did you decide on one or all? No, no, we have combined all, can see? Oh. Yeah, this is the combination of the all metaphors. Right? So the, the captain that we have uh, shown is not going to be placed on that ship. Right? So our destination statement is, is to be a field vessel. Okay. Carrying inspired and sagacious intellectual community who form a strong backbone and driving forces who actively fix a puzzle and okay. um, focus now. That portrays a highly referred, referred state of the art garden with trees of good fruits and shelter. They need it by the So, this is how we want it to be, okay. at least in the year 2020. And we are working on it now. Okay. So I think we move to our expectation. Uh, our expectation to all agencies are written on this page, on the last page. Yeah, we want to work together, we want to engage all agencies or kunyas, yeah, outside the school year, or center, or division, or institutes, or mahalla for student development. So for that, uh, we need to have a clear guideline on how our SSD should be. Right? So we want to work together with CPD, with RMC, with MSD, with RC, with DECA office to enable our academic so that they can play a real role as academic members. We also want to work with OSIC, with KCA, with AMAT, with whatever relevant agency to enhance our global prominence as well as local problems. We do not want to only focus on the global arena, but also on the local sector, right? So we look forward to be working with your office, the director's office, and all agencies in which can provide support and advice for us to I mean, operate well, okay? As a higher education institution. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think. Uh, I just ask only one, one question. And uh, uh, your foresight. Yeah. Uh, yang supporting vision. I don't know whether cultural role is in embedded in that. And the social. And the social. And the social. Uh, I mean, spiritual and whatever, spiritual and whatever.
I think culture, culture is important now when you talk about soft power. Uh, what I find, I remember Islam adopts all culture. They, we don't diminish culture like the Christian do. So, but we have not been able to show the diversity. I mean, they still have that. If you talk about the culture in Malaysia, what do we show? If I may respond to that, uh, we work with um, uh, the uh, Commission of Higher Education in Thailand, I think uh, Dr. Zainal knows about this. Uh, one of the roles of higher education institutions in Thailand is to uh, preserve and to substantiate the Thai culture. Yeah. The Thai culture and Buddhism. Yeah. And I think it's not only a focus on the social roles, but to up the three roles, the educational or social also, or and even intellectual. Right? So you have to be working for Thai and Thai culture. I think this is something that we should, we should emulate. Yeah, because we do so, culture, we do so value. This is my worry. It's not the culture per se, it's a value. Like Chita Anak Tari lah. Mata Mata Mata. The culture is basically kita tak pernah go. Very, I was subtle, very subtle. Right? We don't have that culture, we lose already. So my worry is our Malay youth, right? basically, Malay the boys, particularly, lost their identity because they lost their culture. So how do you bring back in a very... Yeah. Yeah. Deliberate way. Yeah. Really de 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 deliberate way. Mm -hmm. Yang our culture is important. I mean, this is why when I talk to the to the to the Koreans, they say the K-pop is banana. It will be the influence of all through culture. Mm -hmm. They better we will not win the war with any of this, world, but the culture will win. Mm -hmm. And they will be like the Korean there, they makan Korean is a kimchi. I cannot do that. But you know, the culture somehow or other. I think we need to deliberately design the, the culture that needs to come back. All right. One question, and I believe that some of I mean, our mm -hmm. colleagues here can answer this because some of the research, uh, perhaps by the Department of Psychology or Sociology, it have focused on this uh, culture related to matter or issues. Like um, uh, in the Department of Psychology, uh, the, the ontology of knowledge, for example, is not only coming from Western literature, but we also go through the local culture, especially when we are together now. Um, cost you know, cost that we would like to measure something like that. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, may yeah, I invite all of you to... to yeah, as you as a question and answers, anybody who wants to ask questions, you are more than welcome. That's about enough time. Yeah. Difficult questions. I welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, um, that's it. Um, we talked about the importance of preserving our different schools and distinct character of the institution. So we see this institution as a unique. You speak louder. You, 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 you mentioned about how unique this institution is, yeah. um, um, and, uh, it has a distinct character compared to other higher institutions, uh, of course, certain venues and certain linguistic approaches. Uh, so, um, I wonder, uh, in reality, how far can we, can we maintain or preserve this uniqueness? Because as a university, this university is on a closed system. It is part of this broader, uh, what I call it, systemic nexus um, that governs the higher education in this country or globally. So, so no matter what, we have to adjust ourselves to the demands of the systems and regulations. Um, so, in your view, honestly, whether you think the Systemic forces are actually can positively contribute to the preservations of this uniqueness, or whether eventually we need to 
more and more standardization and homogenization. And so we will lose our distinct character. Okay. Uh, a good question, but I, the answer is basically all depend on us. We should be the custodian of this university. That's why for me, I no compromise. Uh, if you are deviating from what the university is meant to be, I will fight it. I mean, that's why I say to you, fight courageously. You know, doesn't matter where it comes from. I mean, this a minister, a deputy minister, a prime minister. I think we need to fight it and fight it in a rational way. I mean, to tell him or her that this university exists for a reason, and they must understand the reason. I mean, how the problem is because people who run education do not understand education. And therefore, the question of who leads in education. If you were to submit to their point of view, then Manani, you have already given up or abdicated your responsibility as an academic leader. And whatever happens, you will be blamed, not them. You know, so that's why Parama Chamika USM, USM was known as University Sukhubrawan. Because we contest everything. Okay. Until until we get it through, we will contest it. And after a while, they understand what USM is all about. So much so, when they, before they meet, before they, meet they, they were asked, what will USM ask? I said, then it becomes your hallmark. That people, do not, people do not mess with you just because they think they can, they can get, get away with it. I think that's where the academic arrogance, I will use this word arrogance now. The academic arrogance that we must hold on to. I mean, we cannot compromise on this. The moment you can compromise on this, then you might as well close down the university. Because this university may another factory. And all the resident debt that you are created for is lost. You know? So I think I think all depends on us and all depends on the leadership. All depends on how good. That's why I, I'm very, very keen to, to get everybody to understand what it's all about. So we can speak with one voice. You know? The garden of knowledge and virtue means this. It's not about something else. Leading the way means this. You know, and all of us will protect that. Because there's a kind of quote unquote the sovereignty of this institution. So I will, if you ask me, I will contact. We've just, we've just done something recently and we got it back. You know, we go to the minister and say, look, this is not right. It has to be this way. And I mean, people are rational at the end of the day. When they listen to rational arguments, they uh, put them on loose, you know, dumb. When people explain to them, they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it, then. So it all depends on us. I think this is the thing that is difficult about the university because we do not take ownership. We do not want to be comfortable. We want to play safe. Why? Because I got a contact with you. I got a contact with you. I mean, it's good. You know? So it's not about you, it's about the institution. I'm not going to lie, you get it right. The WFA will work for you. I don't know if I'm answering your question. But but I think that is that that is the only way out. Or you know, there's, there's, there's no and here you're very lucky, I mean your 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 president is an alumni, you've got three rectors working in the same place again. You know, there's enough people who can speak uh, for the university and testify for the university or I may not be able to do it but I'm just learning what this is all about. But yeah, I think uh, I, I really find that this university is awesome. But you have to make it look awesome, then people will not touch you. <coughs> you know? Why do people not touch uh, Harvard? Harvard got the blue, everybody says blue. Yeah? Although they don't agree with blue, they don't blue together. Because it's quite suffered. Uh, how can we arrive at a state? When I, I am saying red is red with no other colors. And that's your inter where the intellectual rigor comes from. That's why I can't compromise. Or intellectual rigor can't compromise. Because the moment you compromise intellectual rigor, then they can manipulate you. That's why you have to stick to, 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 to the core. 
And then we let them understand the mission, the mission until it becomes important. Huh? Okay. Anything else? Thank you for coming and seeing, meeting with us. Um, I think I have two things. Um, first of all, um, I want to ask you, like, in our finding, digital divide is something that is very prominent and, and something that public perceive as, as an issue, especially during COVID-19. And one of the problems is about the mindset of the policy executors. Mindset of? Mindset of uh, the policy executives, those uh, the government servants, trying to adapt to new norms, and we researchers we want to play the role as bridge to convey the perception of the public to the policy makers, especially. So, how do we make noise so that our findings reach the policy makers and and be included in their um, in their considerations for policies? Um, secondly, is um, looking at the room. I, want, I just want to highlight something. Looking at the room, I notice that there are many women in the room as decision makers, as 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 lead, at leadership positions as well. Why don't I I am take this opportunity to highlight how special I I am is, especially in the Islamic world, in achieving SDG number six, which is gender equality, and that I think can also be a point in which we can highlight our uniqueness that we recognize women because I think half of the room are women and uh, and I think this is something that is very unique to IIUF and uh, I hope that it can be taken as a selling point as well to show how IIUF is actually pushing for sustainable development in our world. Thank you. Okay, uh, I, I, I will try to answer the second one first. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's almost a fact of life that um, women leadership is coming to the fore. Right? And I think this has been an issue as far as the Islamic world is concerned. If people want to criticize as we will criticize and how we, how we respect and deal with our women. Yeah? That's why I think they will know when, when, when they do a video I told them where is the women? I'm saying that's a key deal. Kumpanya tak ada sedangkan kerja belakang banyak perempuan. Yeah, I think that that's 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 something that we need we need to recognize because that is the the the, the, the point that we've been criticized all the time. Right? But that brings me to a very more fundamental issue. I may not want to listen to this. But I am asking myself now, I think this is a question that we are asking. Why are the women mahala being fenced up like a prison? <laughs> it doesn't give me a good impression that we are respecting our women. Yeah. Why is it in USM the, the ladies uh, 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 hostels are not being fenced up like this? So that alone, as I walk through and I pass through the first time, I think of Mahala Hapsa and then Bak Wire. These are not these are not ordinary fans, you know. Bak Wire di atas, Bak Wire di bawah. KPK, what you do lah? Then I think that the Ami, you know. Why are we treating a woman like this? You are saying you want to, I mean, I mean, and the men are supposed to look after the woman folk. These are very fundamental questions that I'm asking. In fact, I'm asking already, can we remove the stands? That is a good signal how we respect our women. But now the women are making noise on this. I mean, you seem to be happy. I mean, what really is that to find the women's anymore? I don't hear anyone that is protesting. You know? Uh, why so? I mean, it, it boils down to that idea of how we treat our women for. And yet the first university is made by women. I told my, my, my European colleagues, don't you know, the first university in Islam is made by women, don't tell me that we do not give education to women. Otherwise your university of Paris or whatever will not exist. 
because there's no university to model that way. How many of the universities are built by women? Huh? Now, now we know that universities are built by straight traders, including Yale. Yale is the name of the of a, of a, of a slave trader. And we look at Yale and go, you know, is it something that we need to glorify? So is something wrong with our mindset? Now, that question is not going to be easy. But yet, until we come to the brass tag, what are we here for? We will not be able to answer this question. And your Kula should be answering this question. Because your Kula is with philosophy and all those things. You know, you should be telling me what the answer is. So I'm, I get a little bit worked up on this because this is a, a weak point in our in our in our system. In our system. The first question I forgot it. <laughs> How to influence the woman? Huh? How to influence the policy? Oh my. Yes. <laughs> my my take on this is, is very is very simple. First of all, we must establish credibility. And our university has no credibility. I'm sorry to say. So when I when I see CNN, uh, uh, UBC, when they interview people, they will interview academics, and half of the time they will interview people who have written books. You know, we have not arrived at that stage. That's why I ask how many books did you write. So you need to establish a credibility as an academic, as a as a person who are rational, they are thinking, then they will refer to you. And it takes time to build this. So it doesn't happen just I like you, like you write in this paper, people believe to know this name, keep on repeating itself, and then they will contact you and then you got, you know, uh, a, a, a pass, a pathway. Uh, we created this, you are, you, you are able to do it's meant for you. Every week, hope to do something, you know, they didn't publish it. Anyway, but we are creating, I'm creating that, uh, we are creating that, that platform for us to perform. To the moment they know you, to the moment who is, I think, uh, I, I am going on the statue, right? That's not, not to say that we don't have any statue. But we have them more. We are the international university. I mean, this is where uh, the, the relationships becomes important. This is where talking people across the board becomes important. Unless you have that credibility, nobody will visit. And where does it really come from? It's from books. Why books travel? Don't give all this made in China, made in Vietnam, in the name. It doesn't travel. Your book travels. I'm sure book spirituality uh, and, and sustainability they will travel. Already UNESCO say I'm interested in this book. But who will be the spokesperson for this? So we need to get our, our, our strategy right before we can get And then they will listen to you. I mean, Physical distancing when fighting it three months, and Alhamdulillah, he came back. You know, of course, they don't recognize that we fought for it. Now we are telling, well, now we are telling him, physical distancing is not enough. Physical distancing with social solidarity. I hope my next article will come out. <laughs> other social distancing, no, no social. Uh, other physical distancing, no social solidarity doesn't work. These two must come together. Are they, you need to put on this show, basically. It takes time, but we just be consistent. And then I think it will work. And I, I think academic leadership is ours. I will not give it to anybody else. Not even a politician. Not even a prime minister. Because they are not any just like we are not we are not hard up of their political leadership. They shouldn't be able to. So I'm going to write another article today because I've just said uh, to my statement. Told my daily statement today, but the time uh, he respected the politician because the politician let the professional runs the uh, COVID punya strategy. Or uh, politician mengundo diri kepada professional. I'm going to write the same thing. You should leave the university to the professional. Who is the professional? Same logic. Why COVID boleh have a professional run thing and make a, a success out of it? You mess up our education system because you guys don't know what education is all about. So the same question. If you can write that article for me, I'm not going to tell them the truth. I mean, they messed up the education system. Not that you do not know how to run it. But they messed up. So I don't know that I'm answering your question. But the women question, speak about it. If we can solve the problem of removing the but why you done your uh, 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 u
Yeah. I've seen queues that last the year as well. But you see, you know, it's keeping you longer. It's okay. I, I don't mind staying there after Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the manager is still free. But I, I, call, I see you only once a year. And I'm really so jealous. <laughs> I saw we said question, let's, let's, let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> My best is there. I don't have the mic, but I said that I'm not going to do it. Microphone. You know, Prof, when you address about uh, uh, coming back to Fitra, uh, I think you address uh, to the right person, the right Kuda. They are supposed to jump in. You know, uh, I'm uh, from, uh, I'm Ishwadi, uh, General Studies. <coughs> Actually, we offer uh, previously uh, three courses of the Unicor, uh, Islamic Worldview, Knowledge, Islam, knowledge, uh, uh, Islam, knowledge and Civilization, and uh, Ethic and Ethic for Everyday Life. Three credit hours, then all together nine plus credit thinking and problem solving. But you know, previously we are able to handle this uh, to keep the the uh, the, the intent of the subject, which is proposed by Prof Kamal also by our seniors, our forefathers. But lately, because nobody want to defend, able to defend, at the end we we become like other universities. It will it is reduced to two credit. And then this Islam worldview, Islam knowledge and civilization are combined from six, become two great hours. And you know, for me, I teach from um, 2002 until now the subject. So you know, what make a Muslim, what make a man, what make person Muslim is shah shahada. But what make this university Islam university because of this unique unicorn? And because of this uh, interference, for example, reducing the uh, essence of the subject, you know, I, I, I can imagine what is going to happen to our, our students. Actually, the, the, the department can the whole university until Paco and also uh, Kwantan. I hope uh, if Prof are interested to look for the, let's say, uh, course of line of this subject to bring back, then I'm willing to, uh, to work on this. Uh, I I think that the ticket to the audition is good. We are going to have a meeting July 11th. Uh, on the 11th, we are going to look to, to go to all the course of life. Uh, I think we are going to go back to the previous, uh, previous course of life. Except for the, the credit hours, uh, we, may, we may be used by one credit hours from original 9 to to do or something like that. Because we have to balance between the demand from Kuya yeah, and, and, and the uniform. Because if we with uh, us in Kuya, uh, some Kuya want to go up to 50, only 50 grade, uh, uh, grade hours for uniform. So uh, there, there is some, uh, uh, and, uh, we have to argue with, with the other Kuya, not, not just a uh, uh, not just a uh, key. So that's why, uh, next week we are going to go to all the contact line and see what uh, what needs to be added. I I I take note of what they've been doing, but this is my own experience. Mr. Sevika Al Buhari University. They are supposed to be quote unquote a private university, but just as much as they a private university. Islam, Mr. Ambe, when it's Islam. Kalau pada pada bukan Islam dan Malaysia pas pas Ambe Siri. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't fall in their rules. Their rules say if you are Malaysian Muslim, Islamic study. Malaysian non-Muslim, civic. Non-Malaysian Muslim, whatever. You know? So we went down and talked to MQA. Two things we said. One is, you already mengasingkan pada Islam dengan bukan Islam, you already divisive. And you talk about uni unity and yes, all that. Mengapa kita tak boleh combine kan? Raja Islam dengan Raja Islam is sit on the same course. Dan kita masukkan yang non Islam is kan? And we rename the whole course called Great Civilization. And this too. Maknanya, you don't have to take their word as the gospel. 
you have another idea, tell them and be the one to do it. Kebetulan pula, the chairman of MQA sekarang ni, Professor Asma, one of our staff. I think we need to be, this why I say this, courageously we still masuk dalam cerita ni lah. Kalau you just want to skirt around it, you know, to make them happy and we are finally unhappy, what is the whole idea about? So I think if you think it's important enough, let's look at it from a different point of view, renegotiate because we are not an IPTA. Mengapa IPTA tak buat macam ni? Mengapa IPTA kena buat macam ni? And we are not a full IPTA. And we are unique. You want to show that uniqueness so that we don't get drunk in the other things. So the thinking must be different. I don't know whether it's too late to think this, but if you want to renegotiate, I will lead the renegotiate with Asma. Duduk, dan potong gaji dia ke tak pun. You know, I, I think we need to think broadly that way. And most of my experience are like that. Kementerian akan bagi uh, apa ni, uh, directive. Kalau kita tak setuju, kita gunting dengan dia, kita akan dapat. I give another example. Masa kita uh, kurang ke kursus daripada 3 tahun, 4 tahun ke 3 tahun, kita tak ada duit. You remember that time? USM tak setuju. I call them up and say, direktif ini mandatory atau tidak. Dia kata, ini terpulang kepada universiti. And then we didn't implement it. But half of the time, we do not make that approach. For one reason or the other. So, I mean, you need to be that, that one. And maybe I think you can get a different thing going. Inshallah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the answer also. Whether you have any responses? Yeah. One point. Yeah. Uh, listening to your presentation, yeah. I see that there are so many opportunities and uh, for the university, like the industry I mentioned, uh, you are the foundation of the uh, university. Yeah. I think you should look at other kuliah and uh, collaborate, do a transdisciplinary yes. program. So in, instead of just looking at your, uh, your you know, cocoon, I mean, look at how you can uh, work with education, how you can you work with engineering, uh, economics, law, I think, I think that it will be a very good package. Yes. Yeah. Kalau kalau itu the priority, I think should give the seat more, the more senior kuliah. Yeah. Yeah, they have got influence. I mean, yes. uh, I I call economics, education. I mean, but but it's more like Harvard is strong because of the school of business. If you move the school of business, Harvard is nothing. Medicine pun tak boleh. Kalau apa yang itu MIT, we need to build that. So your kuliah could be the one that bring names to the whole of this. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you to Professor Faris. Yes, we have started doing that, and we are going to improve and enhance this collaboration with other kuliahs. And we have written some of the initiatives where we have started with other kuliahs in this course. Now one thing that I would like to update you and say uh, was our last year's masterpiece. Uh, last year we had worked with uh, Maui on this uh, Makanya Alabin project. We have had seminar, we had, I mean, this morning we had a book as well. And uh, one thing that we have not realized is the establishment of the chair, chair for Makanya Alabin. Uh, recently they have gotten back to us. They wanted us to revise uh, Maui. Uh, we want us to revise the concept paper, uh, resizing the uh, budget. Uh, initially, they promised 10 million, but we said uh, we didn't want the institute, we only wanted the chair. chair. Yeah. I think that was a very good advice because it made uh, that initiative a political. Mm -hmm. So, this is a political free agenda, yeah. right? So, much so that it is still relevant now. Okay? So, they have uh, recently advised us to to prepare another paper with a budget of 3 million instead of 5 million. Okay, so we have uh, forwarded that to Maui and we are looking for a better news now after we finish our work. We can establish that chair for our Okay, uh, last year... When, uh, when is it supposed to happen? Um, we submitted the paper last week, right? Okay. And last year when they concluded the program with us, uh, they had one souvenir for you, uh, to recognize your 
compression, your readiness to go with you. You've given me breakfast, I think that's enough. Yes. <laughs> and on behalf of Hamid now, we are handing over the oh, souvenir to you. Right? So can we now uh, witness uh, the handing over of souvenir from Hamid to the right of IUM? So I'm giving that one behalf.